A young mother killed. When we arrived, uh, a lady came out and said that her daughter had been shot by her boyfriend. That boyfriend, a promising Chiefs player who then took his own life in front of Romeo Cronell and Scott Pioli. It was a shock to everybody. A city in shock, a baby girl orphaned. How and why did it happen? We have live team coverage. Your news starts now. This is KCTV 5 News at 10. Good evening. Our reporters spent the day gathering new information about what happened, who was involved, and getting reaction from the Chiefs, their fans, and the NFL. We have live team coverage for you tonight, beginning with KCTV 5's Alice Barr. Alice. Amy, we are standing outside where the day's tragic events started to unfold. In the house behind me here at 5401 Chrysler, just before 8 o'clock this morning, police say 22-year-old uh, Cassandra Perkins was shot and killed by her boyfriend, a starting player for the Kansas City Chiefs, Javon Belcher. They leave behind a three-month-old baby and a neighborhood in shock. There's been more cars coming through here than we ever seen. Crime scenes have been a yellow tape. Unusual sights among the cul-de-sacs and quiet streets of this KC Mo subdivision. This type of stuff never happens over here. Uh, like I said before, we're pretty close-knit. Um, you know, it's quiet. And in this quiet neighborhood, our live trucks rolling in, lining the street, are another lingering sign of the tragedy. Folks here aren't too sure about all this attention, heightened because of Javon Belcher's public status as a Chiefs player. No, I don't believe that's the way it should be. I believe every human being deserves the same. In fact, most neighbors around here didn't even know they had a Chief down the street. I've drove by once a while, wait for them, standing outside, and I didn't know it was a Chiefs player. James Chrisman is an exception. He saw Belcher every day, working in the parking lot at Arrowhead. He'll come through and he'll see me, he'll hunt. They chat around the neighborhood too. He always seemed, you know, cool. He was like, you can, you would never think anything was bothering. But again, these guys say Belcher's not really the story tonight. They're more concerned about the memory of the young mother who used to take walks through the neighborhood and what happens now to the couple's nearly three-month-old baby. There's a baby involved too, you know, and and if both of them are the parents and they're now gone. That's really, really the story right there. A little girl who'll grow up only knowing her parents through pictures, family stories, and the inheritance of tragedy left behind. And we believe that baby is with her extended family tonight. We did speak to one neighbor, the next door neighbor earlier today, who knew the couple pretty well and said that he is just completely at a loss, did not want to go on camera, but said that everything that he knew about them, that they were a great couple. Reporting live tonight in Kansas City, Missouri, Alice Barr, KCTV 5 News. All right, Alice, thank you. We're also learning more tonight about the relationship between Cassandra Perkins and Javon Belcher. KCTV5's Janine Kiesling has that part of the story. Pictures show a smiling Cassandra Perkins gushing over her baby girl. Perkins was from Dallas, and most of her family is still in Texas. Friends tell us Perkins was a charismatic, intelligent young woman who was going to Blue River Community College in Independence in hopes of one day becoming a teacher. Perkins loved life and more than anything, loved being a mom to her two and a half month old baby girl. On Facebook, there is photo after photo of Perkins, Belcher, and their baby. Most recently, a photo from Thanksgiving, where Perkins wrote, quote, Happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours. Friends say Perkins and Belcher have been dating for several years, and until recently, their relationship seemed picture perfect. According to a friend who did not want to be identified, Perkins got home from the Trey Songs concert at the Midland early this morning, and she and Belcher started arguing. The friend did not know if the argument continued throughout the night or started back up early this morning. Perkins referred to Belcher on her Facebook as Superman, her love, her heart. Now friends and family must begin the grieving process. Friends, including Chiefs running back Jamal Charles, who was at the couple's home this morning after the shooting. Charles is married to Perkins' cousin and is in several photos with Perkins and Belcher, including one at the hospital when the couple's daughter was born on September 11th. Perkins was just 22 years old. 
Janine Kiesling, KCTV5 News. It was a sad series of events that got us to this point today. KCTV5's Justin Schmidt looks at the timeline of the tragedy. At 7.45 a.m., Kansas City, Missouri police arrive at Javon Belcher's house. When we arrived, uh, a lady came out and said that her daughter had been shot by her boyfriend several times inside the residence. Uh, we went in the residence. She was taken to a local hospital where she died a short time later. At 8.02 a.m., police respond to a second scene. Police say Belcher then drove here to the training complex at Arrowhead, where he had a short conversation with Scott Pioli and Romeo Cornell before seeing police and choosing to end his life. Uh, as officers pulled up and uh, began to park, that's when they heard the gunshot, and uh, it appears the individual took his own life. Kansas City Police Chief Daryl Forte and Mayor Sly James both responded to the training complex. James meeting with Chief's General Manager Scott Pioli this morning. He's trying to do his job under probably more adverse circumstances than he's ever seen in his life. He knows all the players. He knows that particular player. He's, he's very emotional about this. James says it's hard to understand exactly what led up to the 100th homicide in Kansas City this year. There are a lot of people who are hurting. There's a young baby without a parent or parents at this point. And that's true of a lot of others as well. But this is one of those that you can hang your hat on and say, you know, the, the, the time to start looking at these things a little differently. James suggesting looking differently at the lives of the 52 Chiefs players who live in the fishbowl that is an NFL team. We could stand to put things in better perspective sometimes. You know, we, we spend a lot of time, effort, and energy looking at our sports stars, but... You know, we've got schools that aren't working. We've got kids that need things. We've got people who live on the street, and we don't put nearly that amount of energy into those issues. And sometimes I just think we're bass backwards. And, uh, you know, frankly, this is, this is an indication of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm here, you're here, we're all here because a young man in a high-profile position for whatever reasons, felt that the end of the world had come and he had to act in the way that he did. From Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, Justin Schmidt, KCTV 5 News. We talked to one man who says he was driving near Arrowhead this morning and was nearly hit by Belcher's car as it sped by. Obviously, he was already on a death wish, and he wasn't stopping for anybody, whether whatsoever. He had already committed the crime, and I would have been another person in that crime. You know, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about it still, that I could have been a casualty in that whole scenario. Casey Brown says a black Bentley driving erratically at a high rate of speed nearly crashed into him. He later saw pictures of that same car on the news at Arrowhead as the one Belcher was driving. Well, tomorrow's Chiefs game will go on as scheduled. We asked fans if they feel like the game should be played. Let them play because nobody really knows what they really go through. That's what I really sometimes want to get on Facebook and say that these guys really like the regular guys. They don't know how hard these guys really have to work. I think I'd go ahead and play. I mean, it's a shame that it happened, you know, and there's a dark side in everybody, I guess, that no matter how much we think that he's got it made and what would cause this and why, but everybody's got a dark side. KCTV5 Sports Director Michael Coleman is live at Arrowhead tonight with reaction from the Chiefs. Michael? Well, I'll tell you what, I think those fans you just heard who said they should play, the team would love to hear that. There was a speculation there wouldn't be a game tomorrow because of what happened earlier today, but the Panthers, they have arrived in Kansas City. At one point earlier today, they were told to stay put in Charlotte, North Carolina, but they would eventually get on that plane and find their way to Kansas City. In fact, in the last release uh, by the Chiefs, they made a statement saying that Coach Romeo Cornell and the Chiefs captains advised the NFL they indeed wanted to play this game tomorrow. Now, the only chief to go on record, and he would go on record with our reporting partner from the Kansas City Star, Adam Teicher, that being the quarterback, Mr. Quinn, he said it was obviously tough for Coach to have to tell us this, Quinn says. He really wasn't able to finish talking to us. We got together and prayed, and then we moved on. It's hard mostly because I keep thinking about what I could have done to stop this. I think everyone is wondering whether we would have done something to prevent this from happening. Again, that from Brady Quinn earlier today, given to Adam Teicher, our reporting partner for the Kansas City Star. So there will be a game tomorrow. Over my right shoulder, you see the empty stadium, and I'm seeing a lot of folks on Twitter saying they're going to come out tomorrow and support their team. And while there could be thousands of fans in the stadium tomorrow, how silent will it be because of the circumstances earlier today by Jovan Belcher. 
Amy, back to you. All right, Michael, such a sad story. Thanks very much. Well, Chief's owner Clark Hunt sent out a statement saying the entire Chief's family is deeply saddened by today's events and our collective hearts are heavy with sympathy, thoughts and prayers for the families and friends affected by this unthinkable tragedy. We sincerely appreciate the expressions of sympathy and support we've received from so many in the Kansas City and NFL communities and ask for continued prayers for the loved ones of those impacted. Well, this is a horrible story that has people talking tonight, including the Chiefs. What Belcher's teammates are saying on social media about the tragedy, that's coming up. Plus, the unexpected death of a Chiefs player. Sadly, this is not the first time the team has been dealt a difficult hand. Brad Fanning will take a look back. Tom. Well, Amy, we have a dense fog advisory in effect from Kansas City and points to the north overnight. And then a chance to hit a record high tomorrow. I'll have your forecast details coming up after the break. You're watching KCTP 5 News.